Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you for that wonderful introduction. And um, so uh, today I'm uh, going to give you a little bit of insight into tea, a beverage which we have every single day. Most of us start our day with tea. So uh, I'm going to discuss the emerging trends in the tea industry today. And uh, we cannot really understand the present without uh, uh, dwelling into the past and uh, uh, understanding where it all began. So uh, lesser known fact is that the British actually introduced tea into India. And tea is a very recent phenomena in India. It's just 170 years old. So yes, our Maharajas or Sadhus or Gurus of this world were not having tea. And tea is not a tradition that came like multiple recipes in our households that were passed uh, on. And um, but yet like tea has integrated so beautifully in our day-to-day -day life that it's hard to imagine a life without tea. I mean, when I started studying tea, I thought I somehow assumed that tea was always a part of our culture. But uh, the British brought tea to India and it's a very strange story how this all happened. So the British were trading in tea uh, with China for generations together and they took the tea in return for opium from, from China. And uh, then the emperor realized that the, uh, the opium was actually killing his entire population and economy and it was not good for the health of the people and uh, they fought the opium war, the famous opium war with the British, which they won and uh, later they uh, told the British that they would trade uh, tea only for silver. Now the British found that extremely expensive to buy tea and give silver in return. And uh, by that time, um, like Bombay had gone into uh, the British hands in Catherine Briganza's dowry and the East India Company was making inroads in India and uh, they thought that you know because of the geographical resemblance to China our eastern part of India had with China they thought that tea could grow and uh, some research was also being conducted simultaneously and they found that there is a plant which resembles the tea plant from China but uh, looked like a different variety of the same plant. So the British thought that it was uh, of inferior quality and uh, they started smuggling the Chinese saplings to India. And uh, 14 years of failed attempts, they couldn't uh, plant the Chinese saplings into India and the Camellia sinensis sinensis, which is the main varietal of uh, the Camellia sinensis plant, that is the tea plant, which was originally from China, failed to thrive in India. So the British just uh, gave up and they succumbed to their, uh, to the Camellia sinensis sinensis. And uh, finally, they started planting the Camellia sinensis assamica, which was an indigenous plant to Assam. And uh, they started growing uh, the Camellia sinensis uh, assamica. And uh, the first shipment went uh, to Great Britain and uh, the British just loved the tea. It tasted different, but they loved the tea because it went with their wholesome breakfast, with the toast and uh, the egg uh, with the jam. So the tea, the Assamica has a very malty and stronger note. So it gave a full-bodied mouthfeel, which the British really enjoyed. And then there was no stopping Indian tea from there on. So tea is the most consumed beverage, second only to water in the world. And uh, cultures have developed around uh, tea in the whole world. And because of my uh, journey in tea, I have had the uh, uh, luxury to experience these incredible experiences in the world. And uh, some of them like have stayed with me. So when I traveled to China, I've participated in the Gong Fu Cha ceremony where in meetings or even in a, a restaurant, there will be like a tea hostess who's making tea in these little, little pots and she's washing the tea and there's a ritual to the whole experience. And then they pour your tea into these little cups. They give you another cup where you can smell the aroma and then have 
uh, the drink. And this continues throughout your meeting. The hostess is endlessly pouring the cup of tea while you are enjoying, uh, I mean, your conversations or building relationships in the business world or personal relationships. So tea is a silent spectator of all of that. And uh, it just adds to that experience. While I went to Japan, I had the I experienced the matcha tea ceremony. And unlike us, when we get 10 people, we would like brew tea in a pot and then serve it uh, from that pot to all the people. But the Japanese do it very, very subtly. They believe in their experiences and they feel that, you know, every experience is unique to that person. So the hostess or the tea sommelier will make a cup after cup, so she'll make my cup, hand it over to me, then she'll make another cup. So that makes the ceremony long and it teaches you a lot of patience, but uh, it also makes you feel special that this cup is made for me and it's different from someone else's cup. So you learn to appreciate the subtle nuances of tea. Then when I went to Morocco, uh, the people had tea with a lot of mint leaves and sugar cubes. I mean, these days we avoid uh, sugar in our tea. And uh, when I went there, so they poured a lot of mint leaves and uh, sugar cubes in my cup because, and you can't say no to sugar because if the host really, really likes you or your company or loves you or is having a great time with you, they tend to add more sugar cubes. So it's really rude to say no to uh, the sugar cubes. So that was very interesting for me. Then in Russia, people, the summer is always boiling with hot water and they just make the tea very instantly. Uh, they're always ready to serve you tea with a little bit of jam. So um, in Taiwan, they had this very, very interesting concept called the bubble tea. I don't know if you've had it a year now. It's also an emerging uh, trend in uh, India. Uh, so they add the tea with milk and ice, and then they add these tapioca pearls to it. So it's a combination of a shake, cum tea, uh, cum milk, and it's quite interesting. And uh, the youth love it. I, I, I still struggle to appreciate it because I'm still a conventional tea drinker. And um, uh, so, I mean, there are tales. I mean, in India also, when you go to different states, tea has its own culture. And it's so interesting that how people embrace this beverage, I mean, which was not ours. The British started manufacturing it. They started exporting it slowly it integrated in our households and uh, in every state you have the tea it's different like in Kashmir they added the saffron or the almonds to their tea and we have this beautiful beverage called the kava and when you go to Kashmir your experience is incomplete without having kava and uh, then in North India, of course, there was abundance of milk and sugar. So they added a lot of milk to their tea. We add a lot of spices because we have a little bit of a spice culture down south and uh, here. I like it that Cafe Coffee Day says a lot can happen over coffee, but a lot actually happens over a cup of tea. People uh, have meetings over a cup of tea. Marriage discussions happen over a cup of tea. Big deals get closed. So tea has become an integral part of our life in less than 170 years. So I think there's a lot of experiential potential in this beverage that uh, needs to be unlocked. Um, the recent emerging trends are that, you know, we see a lot of tea cafes. And I always wondered that, you know, we were, we are a tea drinking nation and why has tea cafe been a recent thing. We all love our tea at home, yet we choose to have coffee in a cafe. And um, I deep dived into it and then, you know, then of course, history uh, taught me again, a beautiful uh, uh, thing as to how this all has transitioned. So back in the 18th century US, because of the British colonies, was a tea drinking nation. The East India Company supplied tea to the US. And um, suddenly the East India Company decided to levy taxes on tea. Now, 
they, the colonies didn't want to pay tax on tea that they had every single day. So they uh, revolted with the Boston Tea Party where you know containers and containers, shiploads of tea was just thrown into uh, the ocean as a protest and overnight US became a coffee drinking nation. And uh, coffee was a thriving culture and we saw coffee everywhere in the US and from different socioeconomic status can unify at that one place and enjoy the beverage. So I feel that uh, tea has this potential to cut through all classes of people and uh, just blend them together. And I've had some wonderful conversations and long lasting relationships with strangers over a cup of tea. So uh, um, that has, uh, so I think this is a trend that is going to stay and I'm looking forward to seeing how this trend is going to pan out in India and where we see the future of uh, tea in the cafe space. Of course, uh, the high-end luxury hotels also these days have a lot of uh, elaborate uh, tea menus that are growing and every single tea tastes different. So when we got the opportunity, the next emerging trend that I see uh, today is that, uh, which again comes from a reference to the past is that uh, tea was always a medicinal beverage. It was never a lifestyle beverage until the Tang Dynasty where uh, it was made into a lifestyle like ceramic ware was developed around tea or uh, uh, songs were written around tea, books were written around tea and people socialized over tea. So uh, the medicinal value of tea was somehow uh, forgotten. And uh, interestingly, because of my medical experience and then I took a tea degree, I had these two uh, knowledge portfolios now. And I thought that, you know, and uh, then I amalgamated these, uh, this knowledge portfolios that they have. So, and I started curating uh, teas with different fruits, herbs, berries from around the world. And it was just so exciting to develop these teas with medicinal properties or sometimes just for the flavor profile. So uh, it's interesting how uh, tea ha is uh, still moving forward and slowly navigating its way into people's lives. So, uh, um, these are some of the emerging trends today and uh, technology has definitely played a very, very important role in bringing tea and its consumer uh, together. However, though tea is closer to the consumer because of uh, the technology, but you know, technology has also given us vending machines, which are very, very easy, convenient ways of making tea and they churn thousands of cups of tea in corporate offices, lounges or airports and you get the same cup day, cup after cup, day after day. But uh, though it's very convenient and most of us use it through the day, but I still think tea is a very experiential beverage and uh, they take the experience of the whole journey of tea. Like, you know, every teacup in every household is this is unique. Like we might use the same brands, but the way my mom makes tea or I make tea would be completely different. So vending machines just take these subtle uh, nuances away from that. But yes, they are a convenient and an easy solution to bringing the tea closer to its consumer. Thank you so much.